would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Off the coast of Chile, South America, there is an island referred to as Easter Island. And on this very remote island, there are these cryptic statues staring out over the water. Now, I'm sure many of you are familiar with this. It's been all over Discovery and history in different places. There is a location in Antarctica that mimics this very closely, and I would like to cover that today. Now, real quick, just to give everybody a scale on these things. Here's an average one next to a horse. But that's not the most important part that you need to see. The most important part about these is even though compared to a man, they're very large, when you look at the part of it that is buried, it is far, far larger. And of course, this would have been a technique. People wondered, how did they stand up these huge um, slabs of rock and then carve them and all this? Well, I mean, it looks like they, they took them and they slid them down into, into holes and stood them up and then carve them and then cover them round and just to give the imagery. Now, also, real quick, in China, and I'm sure many of you are aware of this as well, there is this thing there was discovered, this terracotta army. Buried in China were these throngs of statues, terracotta statues of warriors. Each one a little different than the next. They weren't carbon copies. Now, the reason for all this, there's been wide speculation, but the point being, this, this idea of, of burying statues or using that technique, why? Who knows? All I can do is show you that in Antarctica, there is something to be seen that is relevant to that. Now, just to give you an idea of where this is in relation to where we have been talking about recently. All right. Real quick, here is the uh, place with the giant and the cave. This X marks the spot. This is the area with the uh, Stargate. If you move just, I guess, I guess you would have to call it south because it's inland toward the South Pole. There are these very strange, perfectly spaced, equidistant monuments sticking up out of the ice. Let me get this arranged properly. And I think that's the key word there, the equidistant property of these. Now, they are of varying height, but we've all seen Arlington. And we know that something like that in nature wouldn't occur all by itself. The size of these is pretty staggering, though. Far, far bigger than the Moas on Easter Island, which would fall in line with everything else that's been said about Antarctica, it strikes me as strange that when Admiral Byrd described what he saw, that he used the word evil. Now, I've flown over a lot of snowy landscapes, and never the word evil never crossed my mind. You know, cold, pretty, uh, gorgeous, um, spectacular, but never evil. So he must have saw something very different than what you and I would picture when we think of flying over a, a vast snowy landscape. 
Some of these, like this particular one here in the middle, is 800 feet tall. Some of these are only about 40 feet tall. But the reason I think this is a graveyard is a couple of other things that I found. And while one of them, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that go, no, you're seeing things, it's pareidolia. I've been looking at this for a long time, and there's a lot of things down here that will trick the eye. Um, and I don't cover a lot of that. I found a lot more things that I just haven't covered. I think I have found what looks like a skull. Now, if we are going to make the assumption that this over here is a settlement that is the result of some type of a crash, this uh, this large opening being a craft, they settled in this region and we're seeing evidence of them hunting and the elasmosaur and all of this type of thing, they would have dead. And they would need to have a place to put the dead. And it's not very far from that location. This would make sense. Now, this is going to take some zooming in. I was looking at this particular one, what I believe to be grave marker. And I think just with time and with all of the, uh, the wind and the elements that we may have uncovered part of the body. And like I said, this is going to be very, very tough to get down to the level. The, uh, the closest you can get eye altitude using Google Earth Pro is about 400 feet. And we are about there now. I'm not going to zoom it in because it takes it down to ground level. But if you look right here, I'll try to focus this as much as I can. And see if maybe I can turn the turn the light down to get the contrast up. That right here is a skull, two eyes, and a mouth. And you can almost see the remnants of the body here. Now the size of this, and you can almost kind of see a scapula here. And it'll give you an idea of how big the monument is. Because this clearly looks like a, an enormous grave monument. The head is about... Let me get down to this uh, zoom level again without hitting the ground level. Alright, there's 460 feet. Let's go ahead and get the ruler out. Measure this. The head is nine feet. That's a pretty big giant. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of people that uh, take issue with this, but if you get Google Earth Pro for yourself, I promise you it's free. You will be able to do things. And if you get even like this is a 24-inch Lenovo that this is on. Um, there's much better screens. They have 27 inch Dells that are 4k. That stuff will show up way closer in even a, a decent tablet. You can then use your eyeballs to then make up for the difference in the focus and the lighting levels right here. There is a very unnatural structure. Let's see if I can kick the lighting off. Nope. That doesn't help. I cannot get any closer, but it's a series. Maybe I can turn the light up again. Every time I turn the light up, it kills the focus. That's why I try to... Uh... It's a series of doorways, a series of openings, right above my cursor here. All equidistantly spaced. And if there were... I'm going to try to circle it. If they had servants, humanoid, like us, this, of course, would have been something that they would have had put in place, just like they did in Egypt, even after the pharaohs died. They had all sorts of plans for their uh, afterlife that required the living to do things. And we saw this down in China, too. So it's, 
you know, like I said, you can speculate about this, but when you add everything together, and there's another structure kind of like it here, where you can see a couple of doorway openings. Something far beyond just snow blowing ice is going on down here. And over here, this looks like a much better example of a tomb. Over here we have a marker and we have this large cavernous area and then we have an entry here. And this looks perfect size for the body of a giant. And this, like I said, at one time, all of this was covered over. And the melt, the massive melt that's going on, that is far greater than they are telling you in the news, in the next five to ten years, is going to change the landscape of science. It's going to change the landscape physically. It's going to change the weather. It's going to change the entire world in the next ten years. And you don't have to believe that, but it's, it's just the case. If we even look 10 years ago at what was going on versus now, it's uh, not even close. You can almost see right here this half moon shape, artificially constructed half moon shape for whatever reason. Now also, curiously enough, if you go to, this is Easter Island on Google Earth Pro, and you look... Actually, pardon me, this is the web-based. Off the coast, there are structures that look like ships on the bottom of the seafloor. And I'm going to show a few of them to you. One. Two. Three, a smaller one, four, five, six, they're all over the place, seven, and of course, just randomly out here in the middle of the ocean, near this island where we have these types of statues that resemble exactly the statues that we are seeing in Antarctica and what looks like the crash site of a ship. The idea that this could be a coincidence is mind-boggling. That, you know, this little tiny island out here could have the same features and the same things going on that we see down here on this giant continent just randomly not a big believer in the random and the more you look up close at this region where all of this is you will see so much stuff that is looks just like city streets looks just like um, pathways and construction things that just would occur hand of intelligence, maybe not hand of modern man, but definitely not natural, especially when you look at this from a distance. See how there's nothing here, and then all of a sudden here you have all of these monuments, and then nothing here, and then more monuments, and then nothing here, and then more monuments. Clearly a creation, not something that was just naturally made and I'll leave this image up just so you guys can look at it these the distance between these is too perfect for this to be something natural like share subscribe happy Sunday